Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use Excel to store information in what is called a list in Excel 2003. If you don't have Excel 2003, don't worry. Most of the functionality of lists can also be performed with all versions of Excel, although Excel won't refer to it as a list specifically. A list in Excel is really just information stored in a database table format. In a list, the types of information that you want to collect are stored in columns, which are also often called fields in database terminology. Each field contains a separate type of information. Examples could be things like first name, last name, title, address, city, state, and so forth. Each row in the list is called a record. A record is a single entry in which you record each type of field information about one thing in your database. So for example, using the fields in the previous example, a record in that list might contain the information John Doe, Mr. 111 Nowhere Lane, Holt, Michigan. In a list, there can be no entirely skipped columns or rows of information. Anytime you leave an entire row or column blank, Excel assumes that that is the end of the database or list. Therefore, any records that you enter below the skipped line or after the skipped column will not be treated as if it were part of the same list or database. Before you create a list in Excel, however, you need to consider what information you want to collect. Sometimes it's easier to think of what to record after thinking of the subject of the list first. For example, let's say you want to create a list to record customer information. You need to think about what information you'll want to collect about your customers. The types of information that you decide to track will become the fields or columns in your list. Assume you will want to record your customer's name, address, city, state, and zip code. When thinking of the structure of the list, you need to consider just how detailed you want to be with the customer's information. Poor decisions in the planning phase can be problematic later. So for example, do you want to record the customer's name in one field or more than one field? Well, if you ever want to sort the database by the last name of the customer, you'll probably want it to be in at least two fields, first name and last name. Noting little problems like this during the creation process will save time later on in editing the list's structure after it's already become a problem. Now once you've decided what information you'd like to record in what field, you enter the titles of these fields as the top row of your list. This is a special row in a list and is often called the field names row or the header row. It is always the top row in a database or list, and it displays the names of the fields for which you're collecting the data. In Excel 2003, once you have the header row created, you can click and drag over the header row and define it as a list. This will make some of the data management features of Excel easier to access and use. To do this after selecting the header row, choose Data from the menu bar, roll down to List, and choose Create List. In the Create List dialog box, check the My List Has Headers checkbox, and then click OK. This will then create the list and add a new row marked with an asterisk into which you can enter your first record. If you have clicked into the list area, you'll note that each field in the header row has a drop-down applied to it. Those are auto filters, which we use to filter data in the list. We'll look at using those in a later section. 
you'll also notice that the list has a blue border around it. This blue border must enclose any records that you want to identify as being part of your list. Note that you can place your mouse pointer over the lower right corner of the list until you see a double pointed black arrow. You can then click and drag to resize the list border if needed. However, you shouldn't enclose any entirely blank rows or entirely blank columns other than the row that contains the asterisk. The row that contains the asterisk is an important row. That is the new record row where new entries are added to the list. There should always be a new record row in your list, but it doesn't count as an entirely blank row. You should also see the list toolbar appear when you click into your list area. Notice that when you click outside of the list, all you'll see is the blue border of the list area. All of the other objects, including the list toolbar, should disappear. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.